Well, hello everyone and welcome to episode two of Conversations. And today I have the pleasure of talking with Marlene Sprouse from Indian Hills. She is the president of Indian Hills Community College here in Ottumwa. And so thank you for joining me for a conversation. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. So I am curious, how long have you been in this position uh, at Indian Hills? Yeah, so I have been the president almost seven years, mm -hmm. but in the summer, I will have been with the college 20 years. 20 years, okay. Mm -hmm. So you've been mm -hmm. connected for quite some time. Right. And uh, my guess is this last month has been different than all of those other years combined. It's absolutely true. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm in a spot of leadership, you're in a spot of leadership, and I'm having to re-figure out things I've never had to figure out before. And I, I guess one of my first questions is, what has been a leadership learning that you have kind of identified in this last little season? What's something you've had yeah. to learn as a leader? Yeah, so I, I might talk about it more as a growing, mm -hmm. um, more than a learning, because I am I think I probably knew it, but I've had to do it better okay. and more yeah. than, than ever before. And, and that is to read people hmm. and to see what they need Mm -hmm. Um, so if, if, and then to, and then to also, um, kind of let go of things and kind of set the stage and then let people do what they need to do. And I've always thought I was pretty good at that, but I think in the last few weeks I've realized that, um, it just, it just expanded. It just got exponentially bigger that we come together we make decisions and then everybody has to go do their job and you just have to trust that that's going to get done yeah that that more uh there's a, a greater lack of being in proximity absolutely which then lowers your ability to read people's nonverbals or um just all of work has changed and I, right I, you know right. you talk is it called eq the emotional intelligence yes. picking yes. up on people um my observation too has been in the moments of stress, um, you know, there's that fight or flight kind of thing. Yes. Uh, I was at the grocery store yesterday and uh, it was silent. Yes. It was, it was filled with people, but like, and I, I, I someone called me ma'am and I turned to them and they're like, I'm so sorry, sir. And I'm like, that's fine. That's okay. And I'm like, you know, we can laugh about this. Right. And the whole place just kind of, right. <sighs> And I think right. it's the same thing as leaders. We're walking with people like, how do we navigate to get them to? <sighs> right. So I have a really good example of that too. So all last week we, so my, my leadership team has met every day, first thing in the morning for almost two weeks now. <laughs> and in fact, one Sunday afternoon, we, okay. we came together because something that the governor had mentioned just switched what we needed to do. Um, so, so we've been meeting and we were going along really well and everybody was jumping in and doing everything they needed to and staying positive and on top. And then we went into weekend last weekend and when everyone showed up on Monday morning, typically they should be refreshed after the weekend. Didn't happen. And we weren't. Hmm. And, and it wasn't that anybody had had a terrible weekend and it wasn't that anybody had particular things going on with them personally. It just took us a while to reacclimate. Yes. And, and I think what I've seen also is people are losing track of what day it is. It's just Absolutely. everything's kind of just getting mushed together. Absolutely. So, so tell me a little bit about your last month. Yes. Like the last month, what are, what are some, what, briefly walk me through what has happened at Indian Hills because there's no students on campus. For the most part. For the most part. Okay. Right. So right. even fill us in on that. Right. Give, give right. me some help. So, so uh, let me answer that one first. So actually a, a college campus is really a community in itself. It's a town in yes. itself. And so we have to, we have students living on campus and, and starting today, we're trying to move even more students back to their home residence. Okay. But we have some that this is home to them. They mm -hmm. have either they're far away from home and, and it would be difficult to get back right now, or they, um, 
when they decided to come to college, they put everything into going to college. So they liquidated so, to be in that right. position. And so and they're no, right there's there. No second. Okay. Right. There, there's just not another place for them to go. So um, we're, we're trying to sort through that right now. But will we be completely without students on campus? No, okay. because because we have a we'll have some left in residence halls. Yeah. And so when you have that, then you also have to have food service for those folks. And you have to just make sure um, you have to make sure that all of their needs are, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're adults, so we don't have to provide for every need, but we have to help them know how to access yeah. what they need at this point. So there, there will be some of that going on, but we have far less students on campus right now than we typically do. Um, so then, so then in the, the, that idea of in the last month, so, you know, we were we were hearing probably a month ago. We were hearing as everyone was. Um, you know, we we need to start thinking about this. We need to start um, planning for um, and and everyone asking when when are we going to hear something in Iowa? When is it going to begin to happen? Is it even going to reach right, us? Right. And and then that whole is it is it um, do do you react? Or do you think, you know, it's just hype. And, mm -hmm. so, and so you kind of have to balance that. Sure, you're sifting you're, a lot a of different lot, sources. A lot, and, yeah. and I'm sure you're networking with different colleges that even are interpreting the data different than exactly. each other. Exactly, so so like, like um, Kirkwood Community College is in Cedar Rapids, and so they have a, a denser population. DMAC is in Des Moines, they have a denser population area. And then there are places like Northwest Community College that's in Sheldon, Iowa, way up in the Northwest mm. corner. And and, and those of us along the along the southern border here that that are really less populated, and yeah. so and so the the virus itself, the hype, the reaction, the response has happened differently in in different places. But about two weeks ago, then um, I I actually was on the road, and my vice president called, and he said, "Okay, so we're starting to hear even more mm -hmm. that we maybe need to start planning." for um, some response to, to the coronavirus getting close to us. And, and I said, okay, fine. And, and I had actually canceled a meeting for the next morning, but I immediately turned right around um, and said, nope, we're, we're, we need to have that. Yeah. And so starting from there, we just began, um, okay, what can we do to begin our social distancing? What can we do to, um, reduce big groups of people? Um, is it time for us? Some of our colleagues were saying, hey, we're moving completely online. Well, when you have a lot of career and technical programs. I was going to say, like, you're, by career and technical, you're talking like your auto mechanic. Welding, auto, even the, the health air. sciences, like even nursing and radiology and um, all Tough of to those. do a suture on exactly. line. Exactly. Yeah. And to prove that you really know how to do it. So you're just in a completely different landscape than a, a, a University. University of Iowa. That's right. That's right. And so people kind of believed if the University of Iowa was going completely online, then everybody else in the in the state should as yeah. well. Well, we have moved as much as we possibly could mm -hmm. to what we're calling um, alternative delivery systems. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so we did things like uh, every faculty member does have access to Blackboard, which is our online learning okay. um, platform. So students and faculty have access to that. Some are better users than others, mm -hmm. but we just started, we already had about 300 courses online anyway, and then we just started moving as much as we could to um, that online interaction. Yeah. We reduced numbers of students in labs, so we maybe were running sections of labs okay. so that people could be spread out a lot more. Um, as of today, we are going to pause our labs okay. because we were be you trying know, to still be proactive. About, yes. And honestly, respond appropriately yes. to the recommendations. Yes. Yeah. yeah. How's this impacted? Uh, one of my favorite things about Indian Hills is the the high amount of international students yes. you have. Yeah. Clearly this is a world reality. Yeah. How is that? Talk me through what different, how many different nationalities 
would yeah. you say I would a say, given yeah. semester We probably have, have 25 okay. different uh, nationalities on campus. Um, we, um, we're really promoting international a few years yeah. ago and, and really want to. And then about a year ago, um, you know, the, the uh, visas were more difficult to get coming out of countries than coming to sure. the U.S. So our population isn't quite as big as it was for a while, but still we, we, we still had um, over a hundred and I don't know, 40 or so yeah. international students on campus this year. And so, and they're from all over. All I mean, over. I've met a South Korean, I've met a Brazilian, mm -hmm. I've met mm -hmm. uh, a Honduran, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and just love that. Yeah. And, and the reason that we really wanted to promote that several years ago um, was, uh, of course, all, all college administrators look for what they would call enrollment pools, right? Right, right, right. that's fine. So, so that, might, that, that was one option. But really, we also wanted to make sure that those students going to college in Southern Iowa had interactions. Yeah, with a more diverse from, environment. A more diverse environment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a little over a year ago, I had a, a conference. We had a whole bunch of people going to it in Minnesota. And I had struck up a conversation with uh, these Indian Hills students who uh, were in the aviation yes. program. And I, I said, how many different places have you had a chance to visit? And they're like, none. And I said, come with me to Minnesota. I said, you don't have to attend the conference. Uh, I'll just drop you off at the Mall of America. <laughs> so we, we get up to Minnesota and I, I bring them to the Mall of America and we went to the, the top floor of the parking garage and these students, they, they just stood and Minneapolis airport is right there. Oh, yeah. And they, they spent over an hour just naming each aircraft landing in. And I was just like, well, this is the That's wheelhouse, cool. you know, yes. like I've been here a hundred times. I've never <laughs> once thought like, I wonder what airplane that is. So, right. um, I love that. Uh, the Indian Hills basketball team was doing so <laughs> well again, again, they were, I, they just crushed. I mean, what, how did that all They play? are that, you know, they've handled it really, really well. And, and so have our coaching, our, our coaches, our, our coaching staff and, and handled For it really well. For those of you well. who don't know, the Indian Hills program was like <laughs> in the final eight, Final sixteen. Uh, we were, we were. Oh yeah, yeah. Fi uh, we were, we were seated number two in the national tournament. And oh, it was looking good. Yeah, it was looking very good. And this is a very talented team. I know. I've been to a couple of games. And, <laughs> very uh, talented you know, team. Uh, so, friends of mine have yeah, gone. you know. So it's it's the the athletic world was um, some of the first to begin to respond mm -hmm. to the spread of the virus and, um, and the national junior college athletic association did then cancel the national tournament and all spring sports. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's tough for a young person who, uh, came to college to, to play or to participate and, and of course to be a student as right. well, no. but what really, but, but what they really spend a lot of time doing is, is investing in, in that, uh, that athletic program. And then all at once they can't even practice. So yeah. they can't do that. And that relationship dynamic yeah. changes too. Yeah. Um, athletics is one of the primary ways I think the community can, uh, in normal times mm -hmm. interact mm -hmm. with Indian mm -hmm. Hills. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some other ways? Like, mm -hmm. is your library open to the public, or you know, because yeah. you are your own community. Yeah. I mean, you are. You're your town. You're you're operating. Uh, but we're not closed off. You're exactly right. right. So, and 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 I think that's an important thing to know because because um, because our our campus is kind of kind of away maybe it's set from, up on the it's hills. set up on the hills and 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 you kind of have to drive in, mm -hmm. uh, of course, to get there. Um, in fact, I was on the Centerville campus uh, when I first started with Indian Hills and had lived in Centerville for a long, long time and felt the same way. People don't don't walk into it's, campus. Because it's back behind right, right, basically right. the town center. And so at that in, in in Centerville, you drive to get to the baseball field or the, or the child development center and not really in the middle of campus. Mm -hmm. But in on both campuses, we would we would just love for people to to be in normal times, right, right, not right now, yeah, well, um, on campus. And um, there always are 
uh, fine arts events. So yes, our Been to our, a play, yeah, uh, our, yeah, our plays and our, our drama department has just and music departments have just been phenomenal in the last few years. And so that's it's just wonderful to have that. We do ha our library is open to the public, and there's an art gallery in the back of the mm -hmm. library. Yeah, when you go all the way in down to the right, I yep. think. If yep. I, yeah, yeah, and it's open open to the public. There are you know the the um, disc golf courses on campus, and there. There are um, some some walking paths on campus. I, and I've run those. Yeah. They are up and down, they but are. It's, it's, it's great. <laughs> like, and it's pretty. It's yeah. just the landscaping at Indian Hills, I think, is done really well. Yeah. Um, uh, with just a little bit of time that we have left, are there any projects that you've recently finished up, maybe building wise or uh, mm -hmm. academic endeavors that you've gone or you see? For, for seeing the near mm -hmm. future. Can you tell me a little mm -hmm. bit about like some current news not related to yeah. the current news? Yeah, good. So um, actually we're right in the middle of a remodel project of the, um, the food service prep area and serving area okay. of our main dining facility on the main Ottumwa campus. Okay. So uh, that was scheduled to begin when right when we go on spring break and because we were um, shutting some of our some of our services down and not having as many students on campus, it started a couple weeks early. Okay, so, it's so you fantastic. didn't even have to hit pause. You actually expedited the opportunity. Right. Okay. Right. So so there uh, actually there are contractors on campus right now working on that, and it's going to be it's going to be fantastic. Great. It's going to look just it's just going to be a a brand new cafe look, yeah. and and that's going to be wonderful. On the Centerville campus um, this fall, we're going to start wrestling as as a an Another athletic program. Wonderful. So those are the two that are that are kind of big right now. We also um, will be remodeling a space to um, to have. Um, a simul a health simulation lab, hmm. so it'll simulate a clinic or a hospital, and and we'll have mannequins that are electronic, and really? and we have those now, but we're going to move yeah. all of those into a space that really just looks like a hospital. That's brilliant, especially in this time. So, yeah. I, you have a well established nursing program. Yes. What's the buzz that they're here right now? Yeah, yeah. So one of the first things that um, we started hearing and, and needed to react to was um, some clinical sites saying we can no longer take students in Got because it. of the virus. Right. Now that's been kind of a mixed bag as well because there are some long-term uh, care facilities who love to have students there because they're are more hands and more voices yeah. and more caregivers. And nursing really is like an, are there. an apprentice kind of it is. It is. opportunity. They so. they have lots of clinical experience. Mm -hmm. So it's it's been um, there. There are needs. Some though are are saying no. Um, we can't take can't take students in clinicals. And right now we're we're backing away from all of those mm -hmm. anyway. Um, but it you know it's um, it's just kind of an interesting it, it's it's again that interesting phenomenon well today things could change by tomorrow they things could. could change again so in your best estimate like how indian hills do they operate on trimester or semester? yeah yeah it's well we call them they're 12 Term? terms okay yeah so yeah so this term is obviously bleh. uh yeah. what, what's the, <laughs> the anticipated if if things Kind of curve like right. they, we hope, right. you know. Right. When, when's the next term start for Indian Hills? Yeah. So then, so the next term would start like the it'd be summer. Mm. So it would start the uh, first week in June, last week in May, first week in June, right in there. I don't know what the exact okay. date is. Are you shuffling deck? Do we punt two weeks if we know we have more information? Or like, is yeah. that something you can make a decision on? Not or? yet. We but no, no. But yeah. like, you would have the authority to yes. say, like, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna. We're gonna put two more weeks of margin in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, That's we could. Right now, we are trying to cover as much content with uh, and learning as we possibly can in all these different formats. Um, some of our some of our career and tech faculty are doing 
mostly um, what would be theory and book work now with the intent of when when uh. we do get to come back and if we if we do get to come back and and we're we're still shooting for um, for April 13 that, which is right after what our spring break would be so okay. if we get to come back at that point full strength then we'll just really hit the the lab stuff really right. hard and try to actually finish well, on time well done I think that's that's really a uh the the leader's objective right now is how do we uh reorient in our current time what what can we move around mm -hmm. you know i think mm -hmm. for for me i've had to redeploy mm -hmm. staff to different positions mm -hmm. than what they normally did i know you were doing a but i need you to be in the season and right. it sounds like that's that's kind of the leadership thing that you're kind of instituting right. like hey let's let's be flexible on this so right um do you have a favorite book or a anything like that uh, any, any any favorite learnings of things mm -hmm. people have more time They're, they might even read now mm -hmm. um i read mostly professional material yeah, rather I probably, I probably won't be reading any of that <laughs> i'm not very professional rather uh, than fiction okay so, um so give me this who are some leaders that you have been inspired by or learned from yeah okay so my all-time favorite um is one that that probably educators would know and and maybe other leaders wouldn't as much but my all-time favorite is a, a woman um whose name is margaret wheatley okay and margaret wheatley really was a scientist hmm. but she um began to study organizations and study them um talk about them in regard to uh, how they are like chaos theory, how they react in similar ways. Chaos theory, that could really apply maybe right now. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> it, it can because, because one of the things that she really talked about was how you take a look at, at everything around you and you find the patterns in the chaos. Hmm. And, and that has really served me well and yeah. still is yeah. because you find, okay, if we, if we follow this pattern, um, we can, we can find some organization to the chaos. We can chart some new gnomes. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. Well, mm -hmm. Marlene, this has been so fun getting a chance to talk to you. I hope we get to do it again. This is something me we're too. just trying. And Good. so thanks for checking out this week's or today's conversation.